Hello and welcome back to Zonic TV, I'm Andrew Weir and this is part of the rigging tutorial series. It's not actually rigging, we're going to be looking at weight painting, which is the next step. And so if you haven't seen the rest of the tutorial series, it doesn't matter too much, but there is a link in the description and that will take you through rigging. Uh, not anything specific like a human character, but it will take you through all the settings of rigging and I'll t give examples of how it can be used so that then you can apply it to whatever you wanted. Because people don't just rig and weight paint human characters, they use it for many more things as in this tutorial I'll explain. So, let's get started by deleting these two because we're not going to be rendering anything. Drag this cube as I'm going to need it later. And I'll just scale it on the Y axis like that. And then I'm going to add a sphere. So again, you can just watch or you can follow this if you want. But if you are following now, I'm just making this easy by showing you everything that I've done so that you know there aren't any weird settings. I'm going to be looking at the sphere, so uh, ignore the cube. And what we're going to do is select the sphere, look at your modes, which you'd usually go to edit mode, but look right at the top and you'll see weight paint mode. And that's where we do all the weight painting. And it literally is painting onto the shape, which is why it's called weight paint mode. And so we've got all settings like the radius, which changes the size of the brush 200% to get higher. And it does actually. Uh, as usual in Blender mostly, the further you are away it doesn't change the size of your uh, of your radius. If you're further away you can wait paint the whole thing. If you zoom right in you're not going to paint very much so uh, just watch out for that because it's, you know, it's not the same on every other software. So uh, The strength here which kind of changes the opacity or slash opacity of your, uh, of, of your paint which it doesn't exactly do that, but it goes from a range of colours. If I take the strength up to 100% and I have the weight here up at 100%, I can paint onto the shape uh, a red. And as we slowly get down closer towards blue, it doesn't actually... It's, it, the, the red doesn't become fainter, but there's a range of colours which you kind of need to know so that you can know how to make it fainter. And if we take it to 50%, which I'm doing with the weight, in the, up, up, up at the top here instead of the strength because they both pretty much do the same thing uh, as long as you make sure your strength is 100% I paint here and we'll get a green I take it just towards 0 but not quite 0 so 0 0.1 or something paint next to that and we get a blue and uh, that's a very light blue because it's slowly fading into this dark blue which is practically nothing or it is nothing and it won't be affected by the weight and uh, if you're thinking, well, I don't really know what weight painting is right now, uh, I will explain it when I get through. I'm just explaining all the colours and things, and I'll explain what it does. So, uh, and obviously anywhere in between these is a different colour as well. Uh, so, if I take it between green and red, we'll get like an, a yellow or an orange, so there's the yellow. And if I take it in between blue and green, we're just going to get a slightly uh, more solid blue. So in between there, and it's kind of like a turquoise colour. So I hope you can see that. That's kind of the range that it follows. And when you actually get round to weight painting, the smoother it fades into the into the blue here, the better. And there are a few tools that can help you with that. So we've just been using the draw tool. And if you do actually want to rub it out, like say I don't like this area down here being as low as it is, take it all the way down to zero, and then just rub it out. So that will take it to the dark blue, and let's say I want to straighten out the top, I can do that too. And that gives us a nice little strip there, which then, let's say I don't like how sharp this edge is now, and I've already rubbed it out, and I didn't like it before either. So I can take it into the blur tool, make sure that this has got a weight on it, and the strength, just to show that, so that it works quite well and just paint around the edge and that will fade it in to the other colour. So that kind of, uh, that's how you make it fade into the other colour with the blur tool. And I'm just going to do that because I liked it before for this tutorial. And then we've got add, which if you're just using on its own, it may look just exactly like the draw tool and you may think that it's exactly like the draw tool. But let's say I have the strength at 100% and take it to 50%. I'm just going to bring my radius down a little bit. 
And if I quickly change back to the draw tool and I draw across the whole of this, then it makes one solid green line all the way across. But if I take it to the add tool and I draw all the way across uh, this way, then it's making that red, not green like it was before. And then we get an orange there, and then we get a green there. And if I keep going, then we'll get green, and it goes to a uh, light color because green's 50%. And what that's doing is we've got it at 50%. So when I drag it all the way across, it's actually adding 50% to all of these. So if you've got this green here at 50%, and you add 50%, then you're obviously going to get 100% which is red, so we'll get that there. Uh, I hope that makes sense, and I'm not going to explain the subtract tool that very much because it's the exact opposite. And if we've got uh, a red here, it'll take away 50% of the red. So that's pretty basic, and that's how you do all the weight painting, and they are the main tools that you'll ever have to use. I mean, I'm not too sure what the point in a lot of them are, but there are many. And that will be the basics of that. And this, the second thing to mention about weight painting before we get to the rig is it's not just for rigging, as I'm going to show, because if I go into object mode and we just look at our groups here in the object data, we've got a vertex group called group, which is actually exactly where we've just painted. So edit mode, deselect everything, press the select button once you've got your group selected, and it will select all the area that's got weight paint on it at the moment. And you may think that none of this did, but it actually, I must have very lightly painted it, in which case it, it's showing all the area that uh, is affected by the weight paint. And uses for that range from the particle effects and cloth effects and so on. For instance, I add particle effect, hair, change the vertex groups, density, T to group, and we only get it where the group is. So quite useful, uh, quite a loads more uses, which I'm not going to go into. But right now I'm just going to delete this, as we're done with that sphere, and we can look at this cube here. Okay, so um, sorry about the little jump there, but I've actually just put a rig inside this shape uh, to make it a little easier and a little quicker for this video. And what, because we're just looking at the weight painting, and we've already looked at rigging before. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode on this shape, having it already had it uh, rigged in the center, but I've literally done nothing else, I've just put a rig in the middle there. We're going to add two ring loops with control R, I'm going to add them across the sides like that, and we're going to change this shape into a cylinder. So select these new sides in the middle that we've added, scale this on the shift Y axis to get a cylinder shape. And that's pretty much that for the cylinder shape. But for it to actually rig and bend and work properly, we're going to need a few ring loops across the middle here. So you could just add one if you wanted, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a random odd number, uh, making sure that it's odd because if you get an even number, then you don't get a cut directly through the middle. But you get an odd number and you've got a cut right through the middle there, which is what we need. Uh, and if you really do want to do the very least uh, weights, uh, ring loops that you can. Add three for this video and you'll see that in a sec because what we're going to do is we're going to add that many as long as it's not a number and the reason I say add at least three is we're going to have to grab these three in the middle here, scale them on the y-axis inwards like that. And that's just for later, I'm going to tell you a really handy little thing that's done with uh, characters, elbows and so on. Uh, I didn't even know this till like the other day, which is why I wanted to mention it. And so that's pretty much set up. I'm just going to grab my rig and put it in X-ray now. So again, this should all be kind of familiar if you've done rigging before, because you should have rigged something already, and um, so you uh, you're moving on to weight painting because you don't have to start at weight painting. And what we're going to do is we're going to parent these now. And it's very important that you parent them, otherwise the weight painting and everything isn't going to work. So to parent it, you don't want to select the bones, then the mesh, because we press Control p then, and you can only parent the object. So what we want to do is parent the mesh, so select the mesh first, 
to the rig, control P, and we get a whole list of options. And we can do automatic weights, which absolutely works perfectly and your job is done already. But this is because we're on a basic shape. So if you if you had an advanced shape like a human character, it's gonna get quite messy and it's gonna do some random stuff that you don't really want. Which is why I've shown you all the tools on how to get rid of it and things to make it more useful so that you can uh, you can rub out the areas that you don't want. And I actually have another tutorial, if you look way back it was like my second tutorial, uh, and that shows you how to remove these areas as well. I, I think I just show the shoulder and maybe the leg, I'm not sure, but anyway I, I thought it was quite useful so let's go into and it, uh, weight paint mode on this first. And we can see that we've got a weight selected there. And if I select this, then it immediately takes us into uh, back into object mode and it doesn't look like we've done anything. That's because if we take this one into, uh, into weight paint mode, we also, to get it working properly, need to take this bones into pose mode. Now click back on your shape and you can easily select between bones. So make sure that you've got bones in pose mode and mesh in white paint mode. And then from here, as I say, it's perfectly done. I can rotate this, it's all okay. And as we get lighter in colour, the less control that the, the, the mesh has from the rig. And so, just to show that, if I paint just here, then we can see that when I rotate this now, that part's going up as if it's a part of this. That's pretty much what weight painting does, and it's all fine for us right now. So, as long as you know how to use these tools, you can clean up stuff, and as long as you know that you have to automatic weight it, and then sort it all out, and have them both in pose mode and at weight paint mode, everything should work fine. But the final thing is when I rotate this, it kind of gets a little messy in the middle there. If I zoom right in. It gets a little messy in the middle there. There's, there's no point in having that like that. And here is fine, but there's a bit messed up. So the final thing that I was going to mention, it's incredibly useful. It's done on elbows and legs for human characters. Is you need going to need to go into edit mode. So take into edit mode, and we've got these ones I've just edited. And I'm just going to quickly take this out of X-ray so that we can continue to edit this. So, go into edit mode, and what we're going to do is we're going to grab these three here, press Alt M for merge, and merge them at center. Same here, Alt M at center, and then keep on doing that all the way around. Okay, so with that done, uh, don't go completely all the way around. What you're going to need is these three, if you've done it exactly the same as me, like that, just for it to bend properly, and these ones like that. And this is assuming that the elbow is inwards from the top, so uh, we're going to be bending upwards. If I just take us back to the rig, put that back into X-ray, take it into pose mode, as we've already got it rigged, we don't need to go back into weight paint mode. What we're going to do is bend it like that. So we can see that's done, is in the middle it just bends as one, but at this part here it's a nice curve. So uh, that's how that's done and it saves uh, vertex space and face poly count. So I hope you found that useful. If there's anything I've missed out then just post in the comments, I can try and help you. And I think next I'll move on to actually looking at a human character again, just to redo my old tutorial. But from here, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.